Okay, this meeting is being recorded per Governor Lamont's Executive Order 7B. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the October 27, 2020 meeting of the Weathersfield Historic District Commission. For those of you who have not been here before, tonight's session is composed of two parts, the public hearing and the public meeting. In the public hearing, we ask each applicant in turn to come forward and explain their application in detail. This will give us an opportunity to clarify what you are proposing to do and for you to ask any questions. Also, commissioners may voice an opinion or suggestion based on their own feelings. However, a vote is not taken until the public meeting following the public hearing. In the public meeting, which is not open to public comment, we will deliberate your application and decide how to act on it. We may approve it, approve it with stipulation, table it for further consideration, or in rare cases, we may deny it. You are welcome to stay for the public meeting, but need not do so. The results of tonight's meeting will be available from the Weathersfield Building Office tomorrow at 860-721-2839, anytime after 9 a.m. Please be advised that the Historic District Commission approval does not preclude the need for other required permits, such as zoning, inlands and wetlands, or building. Please contact the building department to review any other permits that, permits that may be required before you be, begin your construction. With this, I will ask our clerk, Commissioner Lyons, to read the legal notice. Thank you. Legal notice, Town of Weathersfield Historic District Commission. The Weathersfield Historic District Commission will hold a virtual public hearing on Tuesday, October 27th, 2020 at 7.30 p.m. on the following application seeking a certificate of appropriateness. Application 5073-20, Lawrence Burrill seeking to construct one story addition on rear of garage at 60 Knott Street. Application 5074-20, Paul and Danielle Newman seeking to install six foot cedar fence in rear yard with a transition to a four foot fence long sides at 32 Church Street. Application 5075-20, renewal by Anderson, seeking to install replacement siding patio door at 2 Sharon Lane. Application 5076-20, John Gamey, seeking to construct seven foot by 16 foot one story addition with shed roof and Harvey Majesty windows on rear of house at 33 Belmont Street. Application 5078-20, Matthew Dubois, seeking to replace slate roof with architectural shingles, replace porch ceiling with bead board, replace all trim with ASIC composite, replace lattice skirt with ASIC slat skirting, replace porch columns with composite at 164, 166 Main Street. Application 5079-20, Doug and Sheila Elliott, seeking to replace garage with a 27 by 27 foot garage, construct a 16 by 20 foot addition on rear of garage, construct second story addition above rear sunroom at covered front porch between main house and garden street addition at a six by 21 foot covered rear porch, replace windows in home with Anderson 400 series windows, change siding from aluminum to certain teed cedar impression siding, replace garden street side door with windows at 121 broad street. If you wish to review the application on some file, you may request a copy by contacting HDC comments at weathersfieldct.gov or by calling 860-721-2836. Live participation is available by audio format. Any resident interested in speaking on an application or wishing to listen to the meeting should email HDC comments at weathersfieldct.gov or call 860-721-2836 by 6 p.m. of the night of the meeting to be sent a phone number for audio access. Please include your name, phone number, and address in the email. Town of Weathersfield Historic District Commission, Kim Wolf, duly authorized. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. For the record tonight, we've got Commissioners Wolf, Lyons, Ovian, and Mead with uh, Commissioner Mark Raymond absent. Our alternates tonight are uh, Commissioners Williams and Vasek Miglis. Also missing is alternate um, Damian Kregau. Uh, for tonight, I'm gonna ask uh, Vasek to take Mark's place and Commissioner Williams to take Claire's place on the first two applications. She was not present at the meeting. 
but Kathy Williams was. Without further ado, we've got a pretty full docket tonight, so we're going to jump right in. Application 5066-20, Joseph Carey, seeking to install windows at 57 Middletown Avenue. Do we have someone present for that application? Hi, good evening. Can you, Can you hear me? Yourself? You're yes, you're I'm adding. sorry about that. Um, my name is Jennifer Carey, and I live at 57 Middletown Ave, Weathersfield, Connecticut. And did you need my phone number as well? I'm so sorry. Yeah, nope, nope, just your nope. name. Okay. You. Sorry, this is my first time. I apologize. I'm just trying to, okay. That's okay. So, no problem. Tell us about your application. You. Um, it's my husband wants, well, he installed actually the, the, um, what are, um, the windows by ABC. I have this ABC supply. They're, um, 70 by 60, 72 by 60 white sliders. There's eight of them, eight windows, and they're on our front porch. My husband is going to install them. Okay. I don't know what else to, so what else to say. They're, they're in already. Um, Unfortunately, yes, they are. Did you retain the original windows? I'm sorry, could you, would you mind repeating that? Did you retain the original wood, wood windows when you took them out? No, he had them specially made. No, I understand that, but are is there? Oh, I'm so sorry. Windows, is there a pile of windows behind your garage, the ones that you took out? You know, to be honest with you, I'm not sure. I could go outside and look if you like. That's okay. Um, I'm just curious as to whether you've actually disposed of the windows that were there, uh, because they are very different than what was put in. Yeah, yeah, I know that we, I think we had spoken the other day. They're not that, um, the, like the wooden slats are on the outside and these are on the inside of the double pane window. And the, you know, they used to open up where you could pull them out and now they're sliders. Right. Um, I mean, they're, they're very beautiful windows, but I also understand the whole historic thing. So I'm sorry. I don't, I don't know. No, no, you're, you're doing fine. You're doing Okay, fine. thank you for that. <laughs> um, my husband's out of town and he kind of was like, John, you deal with it. I'm like, oh my goodness. What a, what a sweetheart. <laughs> we're, we're married. We get it. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> we have um, some more time before we actually have to make a decision on this. And I really would be curious about the old windows. Um, does anyone else have any questions for the applicant? I don't... I I do. No. You can go first, Bossa. No, no, no. Basically, what I was going to say is, I don't think I have anything of the applicant that that, that can be answered tonight. So, and, and and my only uh, question is, mm -hmm. uh, the discussion that's going on now, uh, is there anything that we know about the windows that are in the main part of the house? If those were replaced in the past few years and whether or not that was something that had come to us? No, they, they not in the last few years. I believe he did that like 15 years ago. The, 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 um, the windows in the actual house were done like 15 years ago. They I haven't see. been done recently at all, no. And about how long have you folks been in the property? Um, my husband has owned the property for 20 years. Okay. He, I guess it was um, abandoned, not abandoned. It was um, nobody lived in it for quite a long time. So my husband had bought it and he refurbished the whole thing. So that's he's been, I'm sorry. I apologize. I didn't mean to always speak no, you. That's fine. I was just saying, thanks for uh, uh, giving us the timeline a little bit. And uh, you've done uh, really well in uh, checking in with us tonight. That's uh, very you. much appreciated, I'm sure, by all of us. And I mean, I could try to get more information, whatever you needed, Abs whatever you need. I, I can do if you give me a list or whatever, I could call back if, if you had anything for, for me to find out for you. Well, we'll discuss. I'm a little more nervous. During, I'm sorry. <laughs> that's okay. We'll discuss okay. more during the public meeting. And there isn't anything. Thank you. There isn't anything we would need to know uh, uh, that would put you out in the dark. Uh, okay. <laughs> you can get the answers uh, when you have a chance to go out in the light of day. Uh, and okay. you won't be rushed into that either. So thank you. Okay. 
Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. We'll move on to. Um, you all have a wonderful day. Thank you. You Bye. too. Do we have any members of the public wishing to speak in favor or against this application? Hearing none, we'll move on to, I do have, um, just for the record, I've got everybody on my screen. So if you did want to speak and you're, you were muted on our end, if you wave your hand, I'll see it and we'll open up your mic for you. Uh, moving on to application 5071, the application for 71 Center Street. Hi hey everybody, how you doing? My name is Ryan Allison. Uh, I live at 71 Center Street in Weathersfield. Okay, so welcome back. Thank you. I think last time we were here, um, we could not reach a unanimous vote to act on your um, application one way or the other because uh, I had to abstain. Um, my computer had gone out during your application, so I'm, I'm missing it. Um, does anyone have additional questions for this applicant? Sure. Um, uh, I do. Oh, and I think I'm off mute. So yes, uh, to the homeowner, thank you so much for coming back um, to the meeting two weeks later. Um, I know that um, when you were with us last time, um, we spent a bit more time on another application that was on your street uh, before reaching yours. And at least for my purposes, I kind of thought we might take some more time with both properties before we made a final decision. Um, so one of the things I might have asked you to consider at that point was if you had had the chance to see the windows that you're proposing to use in this house uh, in any other uh, uh, houses nearby uh, so that you would know kind of what you would be getting. Did that... Uh Happen. Yeah, it's a good, it's a great question. Um, there are, so Paul actually runs a class at Weathersfield High. So he had, he brought a couple samples of what different windows. And I, I like the, the way that um, we, we talked about it and he, <clears throat> Paul uh, does installations at various historical, um, not just in Weathersfield, but in other parts of Connecticut, and even in, up in Mass, I said, I think he said he, he goes to. So I know there's, uh, my neighbor next door has it. Um, and I know you guys uh, decided against the one also on Center Street. So I, I do get it. Um, but in my opinion, I think these windows look pretty good. You know, they have the energy efficient and, and I'm not going to break my back by lifting up these windows. But they also, in my opinion, have the same integrity as the windows that they do that I have now. You know, obviously you can't replicate these, but in my opinion, they, they look as close as you can get. But that's just my opinion. Well, Obviously, you folks are here for a reason, so I'll let you guys decide. <laughs> well, I, I appreciate your uh, taking the time to go to a class about this and to uh, work with an installer that is well known uh, in the uh, region, uh, not just in Weathersfield. I, I would say a, a couple of things, which is that if you had the chance to listen to the last meeting and, and listening today and speaking right now just for myself, uh, at this portion of the meeting, that our goal is to try to um, use a window that replicates the look of the existing. So what we're trying to do is not get in the way of uh, modernization that uh, makes life easier for using the window, but we'd like it to be the case that when somebody drives by your house, um, it wouldn't be evident that you have a replacement window. And one of the things that the um, contractor or that uh, the contractor for the other project uh, down the street indicated was that he felt that uh, he could not install the window, uh, the replacement Harvey in such a way that the uh, perimeter frame wouldn't be visible from the outside. And thus it, that was pretty influential to me because uh, I have participated in several approvals of the window with uh, caveats or stipulations that would require that they be installed in such a way that you couldn't see the insert window so that it would look like a window that was native to the building. And I would say that it's because there had been somewhat of a letdown in the uh, end result for uh, the use in uh, an insert that I 
was uh, concerned about using this in your home. In other words, uh, in new construction settings, you have more of an ability to hide the window frame uh, so that it doesn't look like it's been put into place after the fact. And if the window looks like it was put in place after the fact, you do gain the benefit of not looking at aluminum storm windows anymore. But what you are looking at is a window that looks like it was inserted into the space of a wood window. And there are products that more successfully replicate that look than others. Um, there are quite a few out there and it really depends on the project. Uh, there are things I really like about the Harvey, but especially on your home, which I would say is one of the most significant homes on that street. Uh, it's right at the junction of uh, Woodland uh, with Center. It has a beautiful uh, far away view uh, as you approach it from Woodland. Uh, it, and it's one of several homes of its stature uh, in that neighborhood, which is probably the best kept um, Hubbard neighborhood. I just felt like, um, and, and, and then finally, we have an example of that window, I believe at 100 Center, that the installation uh, just doesn't look like uh, something that replicates the look of the original window. So I didn't know if you had taken that away from our previous meeting, uh, thought about it. I know that you've just indicated that there's a lot you like about it. And we are uh, uh, conscious of that uh, and respectful of it. Uh, but I just wanted you to be aware of my really serious concern about that particular product in that particular property. No, I, I totally get that. And Paul, I don't know if you have any comments as far as installation on how you can kind of mold that in, um, maybe a little bit superior to your competitors who maybe didn't do as good of a job as that maybe you would do. On <laughs> sure. So yeah, so we're going to install that, uh, keeping all the original and, and the, the, the stop from the outside is going to have the have have the same reveal that it originally did. So the, the, the way that we're installing those, that window will not look much different from the one that was right in there. You know, plus the, I think the, there, there's a couple of things with the house. The house has uh, a porch that has uh, wood uh, casement windows and, and, and the house sits back far enough that uh, you know, in my opinion, no one would would ever say that that was a replacement window in there uh, going by. So, uh, so are you are you indicating that there would not be any reveal beyond the stop of the frame of the insert window? Right. It, it, the, the, the stops themselves will be identical to, to what was there. And you think that those stops are uh, it will protrude in towards the sash enough so that you would not see the flat frame of the Harvey Majesty window? Correct. You're, you're, it, it's, it, it, the, way, the way that we end up doing it, it's, uh, it, you know, it, it blends in wonderfully. And well, you know, we, well, we're keeping the same size stop in there. Okay, so sure. that works. And then, then besides that, we're doing a half screen with the virtual uh, invisible screen. So that, that adds to it even more to the blending part of it. And so what you're indicating is there would be no white aluminum frame visible from the street. The only thing you would see is the uh, aluminum clad sash and the aluminum um, grill that's applied to the exterior of the glass. No, no, it's not gonna. It's not gonna come out looking like a sash replacement. Okay, you're you're, you're still gonna see the window, but 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 the way that it's done, you're you're having all that reveal of the of the of the outside stop itself, so that it's blending in with it. Well, if the reveal of the outside stop that you're seeing is the perimeter frame of the Harvey, that's the thing that I'm concerned about because it doesn't look like the uh, windows in the original plane that it was. And I realized that it's a challenge to do that kind of installation without doing redoing the trim work. Um, but that's, uh, 
you know, there are limits to what you can accomplish with that particular window. Um, so I thank you very much for at least describing for us how it would look. Sure, thank you. Thank you, Mr. O'Doherty. For clarity purposes, the porch windows are not being replaced and the decorative windows in the attic are not being replaced. Is that correct? That's correct, yep. Mr. Doherty, I don't think I asked you to um, give your name and business address for the um, record. Okay. Do that? Yeah, um, I'm Paul O'Doherty from uh, PK Windows and we're at uh, the number 30 on Four Mile Road in West Hartford. Great, thank you very much. Anybody else have any questions for the applicant? I do, Jen. If, if I can ask Ryan, you know, he had the two weeks, if you could expound a little bit more and maybe Paul as well too, what brought you back to this Harvey window, listening to some of the objections from the previous commissioner, what, what made you come back to this Harvey window? I'm sorry. Um, well, actually, I don't, I don't know the exact house on um, me and Paul kind of convened. I was like, Hey, this, this application that got denied was basically the same one, but uh, I, we were under the interpretation that we might have a chance to be honest with you that our, our, my house is a little bit further back than the applicant beforehand. So well, that applicant, maybe there's confusion, right? That was approved. You want the one on center street, your neighbor. Oh, it was approved. Yes, okay. sir. Oh, all right. If that's the case then. Okay. Yeah. I thought it was denied. That's my, that's my no, mistake. It was approved three to two. Got it. So, so again, I mean, what, what brought you back? Oh, to I'm sorry. No. So uh, I think it was Jennifer. She, uh, so we got tabled because it was two to two. Yeah, it was two to two, right? We couldn't. Yes. Correct. Yes. Yeah. Correct. So, I mean, were well, there any efficiencies? I mean, did you look at, so the other house on Center Street and, and talking to your installer and again, and Doug just, I thought it was a pretty good conversation you guys just had with Doug uh, previously too, what you can do with that window. Do you, do you have triple track? storms on the, on your home now yes right paul yes uh, i think alu yeah, aluminum do. color aluminum yeah. colored uh triple track now on that sunroom are those wood windows or are those also a clad composite those are wood they are wood yeah okay anything else anything further and I, I think that the I think the very house next door, not that not that we're not taking them all individually, but I think the very house next door appears to have the uh, Harvey Majesties. In black or bronze. Black, black. Black, yeah. All right. Thank you very much for coming back. I appreciate your time and your effort. Thanks, uh, are there any members of the public wishing to speak in favor or against this application? Hearing none, we're going to move on to the next application, 5073 at 60 Knott Street. Yes. Can you hear me? This is Larry Burrell at 60 Knott Street. Hi, Mr. Burrell. If you can just give your um, address for the record. Sure, 60 Knott Street. That's great. Thank you. Thank you. Um, what do you have for us tonight? Uh, what I have is I have we have a uh, basically call it a one and a half car garage at the rear of the property. It's separate from the main house. And I would like to add to that, add 12 feet to that garage in the same direction as it's going now. So I'm going to use the same roof line, the same soffit, same siding, same everything. So when it's all done, ideally, in fact, I'm probably going to paint the whole thing and redo the roof on it, uh, the shingles, which, of course, would have to go through the you know, there'll be the same shingles that were allowed by the commission. And um, so effectively, in the end, I don't think that, you know, first of all, you can barely see it from the street anyways. And I think I included a couple of photos of my application to show you that. Um, but yeah, it's basically just a 12 foot addition to the garage. So I have a little more storage and add to my workshop. I agree. I think it's going to be barely visible, um, if at all, from the street. So I do really appreciate you coming in anyway. Does anyone have any questions for this applicant? Nope. Nope, hearing none. Nope. I think you're uh, like a well presented one. Thank you. Uh, sorry, Jen, I had muted. I just wanted to thank him for such a complete application, even though it's not super visible. It was very clear. Thank you. We Great. appreciate it very much. Jennifer? Yes. We have to interrupt you. I'm sorry. Um, we have somebody with their hand up. 
and I totally missed it. Um, yeah. That was that wanted to speak for the okay. last application. Can you go back? Sure. Let me just finish this one up. On on this application at 60 Knot Street, is there anyone wishing to speak in favor or against? Hearing none, uh, we'll go back to the application at 71 Center Street. Is there someone wishing to speak on that one? Yes. Oh, you're on me, Go ahead. Hi. Can you hear me? Yes. Um, name and address for the record. Uh, hi, Jennifer. It's uh, Doug Lasella, DBL Contracting, 37 Belmont Street, Weathersfield, Connecticut. Hi, Doug. How are you guys? Good. Good. Um, so yeah, I, I was trying to get in. Um, th there's there's some comments I that I I really would like to make regarding the Harvey windows, um, and replacement windows in general. Um, is, is it Ryan? I'm sorry, 71 Center Street. That's correct. So, yep. Okay. Uh, hi Ryan. Welcome to the neighborhood. By the way, um, uh, I hold a. I don't want to say a unique position in town because there are a few of us contractors here in town that live in the district and we certainly respect um, and I've had multiple conversations with a, a lot of the commissioners off the record in person. Um, living in town, I definitely respect what the historic uh, district commission uh, represents to us homeowners here in, in the village, as we call it. Um, I do take exception to a few, um, well, maybe exception's the wrong word, but I, I would like to talk a, a little bit more about replacement windows. And, you know, uh, Commissioner Ovian uh, re referred to a, a few installations that uh, I have done as a contractor here in the district um as less than successful um we all have to understand that that is a very subjective um opinion um 100 center street the customers are beyond thrilled with the installation um maybe some of the commissioners are not and i respect that um, Paul, I believe it was PK windows. I don't know, Paul. Um, I'm sure he's a very good contractor. Um, Ryan referred to him as, uh, or, or referred to, uh, his ability to do some work that might be better than some of the other contractors that have done some work. I think Paul would tell you that a Harvey Majesty window installed properly is going to be the same on 100 Center Street and 71 Center Street. And it is approved for 116 Center Street. Um, I was also the contractor that put it uh, in Ryan's next door neighbors, um, don't know the address, it was the Kremen's black um, majesty windows. So I, I think what I, I'd like to back up to last week's meeting, um, Commissioner um, Vesic Miglas, who is probably one of the biggest proponents of keeping original windows, which I respect, but he said it ironically the best. A replacement window is a replacement window, period. So here we are in 2020, putting replacement windows, replacing windows in houses that are 100 years old. Is there a perfect solution? I don't have the answer to that. Do I feel married to the Harvey Majesty window? even though I'm a contractor that has put in um, hundreds in the district. No, I'm not married to that window. Um, but when I look at a potential 
homeowner or, or potential client, I'm sorry, um, and they are in the district, they're my neighbors. My work is 100% referral. And I don't offer them the best value, the best energy efficient window versus another window. How am I going to be considered a reputable contractor? So I am asking the commission, the, the, the historic district commissioners to come up with some sort of more objective argument for or against certain windows. So 157 Broad Street, we applied several meetings ago for one window in a garage. I put the window in for the customer, Sandra Stavola. She, you, you guys all know her, she's been here many times. I put the window in and as I'm putting the window in, the, it, well, first of all, let me back up. She applied, I suggested, and she applied for the Harvey Majesty window. The window was denied, or the application was denied. Well, uh, I, I, I wanna get it right. The, the application was approved with stipulations with a window that she had no understanding or knowledge about. She did not want to create a problem. She put that window in her garage, which now someday when she replaces the rest of the windows in her house, she's got to go with the, the Marvin Elevate. The Marvin Elevate does not meet Energy Star requirement. Now, in this day and age, um, that might not mean anything to anybody, but um, all you got to do is just look at the news and, 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 and you know, I'm, I'm going off on a tangent here, but we do have to consider um, energy star requirements, our carbon footprint, and so on and so forth. So as a contractor, if I put a Marvin Elevate in versus a Harvey, and I'm getting the same markup and the same profit margin, it, it doesn't matter to me. But as a contractor in a neighborhood that I know all the people, I need somebody on the commission to tell me how, how we justify this, uh, how, we, how I should say, well, you should get a window that doesn't meet energy star requirements. It costs 20 or 30% more. It does have a vinyl snap-in grid that covers the stops that um, Commissioner Ovian is very concerned about. Um, so I'm just looking for some direction. I, I know you guys know that I put windows in all over this town, including Company One Fire Department, um, the, the Academy of Arts Building, um, Broad Street for Judy Keene, and I offered her every option, including bringing another contractor in that offered other products. And ultimately she decided on the majesty. So I'm sorry for the rant and, and the, the, the long winded conversation, but I just think we need to, um, as a commission, I think we need to have a, a little bit more understanding how this, how this, all this window thing is going to work. Um, again, 100 Center Street, they love the windows. I know a lot of the commissioners are not pleased with the install. Um, you, you know, and keep in mind, please, that when these windows were put in these Hubbard homes, they did not have triple track storm windows. So I don't understand, at least in my view, how you can take a triple track storm off a house, put a Harvey window in and not have it look better. And so with that, I'm sorry, again, for the long winded thing, but I, I'll just stop right there. Thank you. Thanks, Doug. Your comments are always welcome. And I'm sure nobody meant to imply that you do anything less than excellent work in the district. 
Um, obviously, we're all very familiar with all of your work. Um, does anyone else from the public have any comments in favor or against on this application at 71 Center Street? Hearing none, I'm going to jump back down to number four on our list, 50742 Church Street. Hello. Hi, your name and address for the record, please. Frank Satine. Frank Satine. I'm here with my daughter, Danielle Newman, and we're here to apply for a fence. 32 your Church Street. Your address, Mr. Centino. 387. 387. My address is 387. Okay, thank you. So tell us about your project today. Uh, they want to install a fence around the perimeter of the backyard. So the portion 69, almost 70 feet, which abuts the Comstock Ferry, excuse me, rear, would be six foot high, eight foot in length, scalloped. I believe my daughter's uh, provided some photos. But then they don't want to enclose the entire parcel and have it look like a mausoleum. So when they come down the two sides, the long sides, there'll be a transition of that scallop, bringing it down to a lower four foot fence, a picket style fence which would run the, then run the remainder of the rear yard, return against the back corner of the house on each side with a gate on the south side. So it'll be one panel of transition on each side? Correct. Although, I, you know, as of right now, it's one panel. But when I look at the debris containers that are in the corner of the Comstock, I think maybe on the left side, two panels and then the transition so they don't have to see the debris containers. We need to know exactly what you're asking for. Okay, two. Two so and then a trans one, two solid one. panels and then the transition panel. Correct. And the transition panel will be picket or solid? Uh, that would be solid. Okay. And um, we don't have a plot plan here with this. Okay. Can you tell us where it's gonna end at the front of the property? Obviously on the back so, of the property. Yeah, yeah, we're not gonna take it to the front. It'll end at the rear. It'll end at the rear of the house. It'll butt the rear corner. And will so, it run back in towards the house as well, yeah. or just on the side of the property? It'll run back in towards the house on both sides. And will there be gates? There'll be a gate nope. on the. I believe it's the south side. Oh, I'm sorry, the uh, west side. And there's a photo of the gate that she provided also. To allow one, access. one gate on the west side. Correct. And the gate's four feet wide. Does anyone else have any questions? I suppose my only, I, I think it's going to be a fine fence. It's really too bad that uh, when this house is getting built that Comstock didn't put a fence in at the time, but. Uh, you know, that's one of the reasons why we held off, believe it or not. We were hoping a fence would have gone up. Yeah, but my, my question is though, uh, as far as a practical thing, have you considered putting in a wider uh, gate so that you can get something bigger than not quite we, four feet. We had yeah. the conversation. We could do it. I'm, let's go with a double gate then. So let's go two three foot gates, making it. Uh, yeah. sorry, let's go two four foot gates, making it eight feet wide. In the event the truck does ever have to go back there, I don't foresee it, but then that's possible. If, that's somebody, if somebody wants to plant the garden for manure. Yeah, that's a good point. So two four, I, a, a total of eight feet, two four foot sections. Keep in mind, we only have 10 feet there in width. That's that's their property line. So you have a foot on each on each side. I'll leave the construction to the fence company. But yes, yeah. uh, the fence is you know it's a lovely fence. Uh, I think it'll work well in that area. I was just concerned that would hate to see you coming back in and saying, it's "Oh, point. we want to tear it out because." It's a good point. Now we do have to give an easement uh, to Comstock. In the event they ever need to replace their storm sewer, which runs along that property, mm -hmm. if that should ever happen, I don't foresee that. I've been in this business for 35 years. It's PVC. I don't see it going anywhere. It's an eight inch line. But if that does ever have to be removed, that, that cost would be absorbed by Comstock 
and we granted them the easement that they absorb any fees associated with yeah. the repair. The, and again, just for my notes, <coughs> excuse me, the two solid panels and the one solid transition is on the west side? Correct. So okay. we'll do one solid transition on the right side. Oh, no, I know, I, 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 my, my daughter should give me signs. So I think it should be <laughs> we'll do two solid panels on the return on both the east and west side, then transition to the four foot. Okay. Then go to pick it. Got it. All right. Does anyone else have any questions for the applicant? Hearing none, are there any questions from the public? Um, sorry, any comments in favor or against from the public? Hearing none, we'll move on to the next application. Thank you very application much. Have a good seven five two Sharon Lane. Is there anyone here for that application at two Sharon Lane? Miss yeah, Garcia is here. I'm Phyllis okay. Garcia, two Sharon Lane. I'm the homeowner, so there's no one here from um, renewal, I guess. Were you expecting someone to call in tonight? Well, the letter you sent was addressed to them and uh, I got the notice. So I thought that they would come in, but you know, I'm, I'll be more than happy to give whatever information I can give and uh, go over the, um, the description. First of all, hello to some of the um, commissioners uh, who I remember when I was secretary of the commission like a long time ago, I was trying to figure Welcome it out. Back. Over 15 years, but you know, I have to say, and, and I'll make this very brief, um, some things never change, right? This is a group that <laughs> always took all the applications very seriously. And I, having always lived in the historic district, I respect this commission, not only because I was your loyal secretary for a couple of years, but you guys do a great service. So with that, my application is to have a, uh, windows these windows will be replacement windows the current windows are metal there'll be no change and the color that is going to be seen from the outside is the closest color that um, renewal offers to what is currently there now trust me i was very sensitive to making sure they look uh, exactly what they should look like and what they're currently look like um, in deference to this commission. Thank you very much, Phyllis. I appreciate it. Does anyone have any questions for Mrs. Garcia? Uh, I'm, sorry that, I'm sorry they're not here. I'm sorry, Vasek, I didn't mean to interrupt yeah. you, but I, I'm no, sorry no. that they're not here. So I do have the contract. May, if you have specific questions, Actually, I might be able to answer them. Phyllis, you're doing a much better job than they do. Of oh, yeah. uh, <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't. Thank you. <laughs> but True. my one question, my one question is, uh, one of the photographs that either you or they submitted of the corner of the house. So basically, most of these sliding doors are hidden by the fence. Um. Yes, and I, you know, I'm I'm right on Spring Street. Yep. So uh, I'm trying to think. I think what you end up seeing of my slider is probably the upper third. That's what I thought. Yeah, it looks like about the top two feet or so, right. um, yeah. you know, above the fence will be a little bit visible. Right. Okay. Great. No other questions. Anybody else? Thanks so much for coming in. I'm sorry you're... Um, contractor didn't show up. Does anyone from the public have any comments in favor or opposed to this application? Hearing none, we'll go on to application 5076 at 33 Belmont. Okay, thank you everybody, I appreciate it. Thanks so it. much, Phyllis. Um, oh, he's still here. Doug Lasella, are you doing this one or is John Gammy on the line for it? You gotta Hello? unmute. You gotta unmute him. Kim, is he muted? How about that? There we go. Sorry. <laughs> uh, Sorry about that. Okay. I'm back. <laughs> go so, ahead, Doug. so before we go on, 
you know, Jan, John, you can change it. You can change your name from Christine to Masella. Or oh, Doug. Doug. Doug, sorry. Okay. So I'm changing. Oh, 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 I can do that? Yeah. Well, I'd, have to, I'd have to get Christine back to figure that out. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Hey, what can I say? I have my talents and this isn't one yep. of them. Yep. Everybody's got their strong points. I, I, I enjoyed much more when I could come in and sit there and talk to you guys face to face, but here we are. We prefer it too. <laughs> okay. Um, so again, uh, Doug Lasella, DBL Contracting, 37 Belmont Street, uh, representing John Gammy, 33 Belmont Street, uh, my next door neighbor, or my, my new next door neighbor. Um, so we're, we're proposing putting a, um, taking the existing mudroom off uh, and basically going along the whole back of the house. Am I still on? I feel like I yep, lost yep, it. Yep, you're still here. Oh, oh, okay, everything went, okay, everything went black here. Um, <laughs> so this is um, somewhat similar to, um, uh, geez, uh, 27 Belmont Street, uh, across the street from me, uh, that we did in the back of the house a few years ago, the Moretti's. I, I, I think I have the address wrong. But anyways, we're coming off the back of the house, uh, taking the existing traditional uh, hovered uh, mudroom off. I'm going to put a half bath, a mudroom entry, and a screen porch. Um, I think you guys have the drawings to do. Yep. We do. Yep. Okay. Um, all the details in terms of uh, roofing, I, 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 you know, roofing materials, I put the roof on that house twice, uh, once prior owner, and then we had a tornado, I put another one on. Uh, so same roofing materials, um, the siding is going to be the same material. Um, it's that um, kind of funky uh, hover thing where you've got the short course in there. Um, the rafter tails, the trim, everything's exposed. Uh, it'll all be very similar um, to the addition I did across the street. Uh, the deck and the steps will be um, Azek or composite material, uh, slate grade decking, um, Azek risers, you know, white risers. Doug, will the yeah. deck be visible from the street? It, if you, um, no. So if you, well, Done. if you took, if you took the um, fence down in my backyard and you were in center street looking across possibly, um, so I, I guess there's always a view, right? It, you know, depending on where we are. Okay. Uh, the, the biggest view is going to be, uh, my view, quite frankly, and my, my, uh, neighbors on the other side of 33, uh, the Swoverlands. Yeah, I think I drove around and you can actually see the back, the upper portion of the back of the house from center, but of course it's going to be set back pretty far. Um, you know, there's not, you wouldn't really be able to see details and you wouldn't be able to see the deck at all. You'll only see the second story. So that, well, new, it's a, that new I'm sorry, Jen, don't mean to interrupt, but it's not going to be a second story. Oh, I see. You're right. It's a single okay. story. I was just thinking that window is that window different, the casement window? Um, Where is that so, going? So it's not a casement, it's gonna be a double hung. Okay. Um, I, I'm sorry, the one I'm looking at is that I have is, uh, was updated. The one I think you have that I submitted um, should show a Thermatru door coming in, like in the middle. Is that what you see? Yes. You know, an entry door. And then the, the window to the right of that is just a double hung. Okay. 
Thank you, showed us an awning window, Doug, uh, one of the. Oh, okay, okay. So, so uh, above that on the second story existing, which we're, we're not doing any work, except there's a bathroom up there with a, it's not even an awning at this point. It's a uh, fixed window. Yeah. Got it. Uh, we're, we're On the south there. elevation. Yeah, we see it. Yep. Correct. We, we would like to, to put an awning window there. Same profile. Um, I don't believe there's grids anywhere in the house. And I, I know it's my neighbor. And, but, um, so we're thinking about putting an awning window just to replace that because it's in the shower. Um, that that window is actually in the shower, but I believe in my application, I asked for a tribute vinyl window for that window. Yep. And the reason I want to do a vinyl window up there is because it is in the shower. I tried to talk um, Mr. Gammy out of leaving that window, even though there's one on the, I guess, east elevation in the bathroom. Um, he wants that window there. So um, I wanted to put a vinyl window in that location, that one single fixed rectangular window so that on the interior, when we tile the shower and bathtub area, I can bring the tile right in, which is on the inside. It makes no difference to you guys, but that's the reason I'm proposing a, a vinyl window there for, for rotting and that sort of thing. The, the other windows in the lower addition and the remodel would be the Harvey um, Majesty window, wood window. And I see that you're replacing, you're removing that funky T window set up on the east elevation with a single window. Is that correct? It, correct. So reconfiguring the kitchen again, it's the interior work. It really doesn't matter to you guys, but to get cabinet space and, and, and you know, upper cabinets and everything. Um, and I know on this particular style house throughout the district that that's been done multiple times, eliminating that funky, uh, I don't even know what you call it, but the, uh, the, the, the T, you know, the T shape. So we're proposing getting rid of those, um, keeping the double hung, just making a, a, a bit wider and a bit squattier, if you will, in height so that we can get cabinetry under it. Are there, um, I don't see anything about railings on the deck, but I don't think we're going to be able to see them anyway. Well, so at this point where the, there's uh, railings aren't um, anticipated. So because the stairs, if you see the stairs are going to be on um, the two sides and it's below, so I, I may have a little bit of a, um, building code thing with that. I, I, I have to follow through on that. At this point, we don't anticipating, anticipate putting any railings. Okay. The, the entire screen porch and whatnot is below the um, code for uh, height requirements for railings. So the hope is that we don't have to put railings. If we do, then we'd have to come for an amendment. Okay. anyone else have any questions for the applicant? Um, foundation, you've got it drawn as brick. Is that what it's going to actually be? Mm, no, I don't see where that's drawn as brick. But again, no, it's, it's unfortunately the the pictures that we get are, I, I believe, scans or something, and they don't come out all that well. But yeah, sure. Some, there is some texture on the foundation for the addition. Oh, I, I, I can I can see that a little bit. No, there, there's uh, I'm sorry for any misinterpretation, but no, there's no brick. Uh, the rest of the foundation is all exposed, you know, concrete. 
poured concrete. And, that, okay. and that's exactly what we'll be doing. Okay. Yes. I was just curious. I just saw the texture there and said, what is that? No, I, I didn't. Until you mention that, I never noticed it myself. Yep. Okay. Anyone else? Did we miss anything, Doug? No, I think we Doug covered. Lisella yes, or... yes, Doug Lasella. Yes, Doug Lasella. Did we anything okay. else? Okay. I, I really don't think we do. So, so again, the the um, just to be clear, the um, the screen porch. That's a um, fiberglass screen that goes on there. Um, the post in between will be wrapped in uh, PVC material, AZEC as a brand name. Um, and that's pretty much it. Okay, great. Anybody else? Hearing none, any members of the public wishing to speak in favor or against? And I have one question, I'm sorry. On Doug, on that west elevation then, that is there no door on that screen porch, so it's, it's all, we hey, don't have a west hey, elevation. Hey, Chris, you, yeah. you and I go back a long time. You gotta give me a direction. What, what neighbor am I Sorry, your at? side, your <laughs> side. So, so we got to like, get south and east. It doesn't look like on the one drawing, the yeah. overhead kind of floor plan. So no, no outside doors to that screen porch. Oh, you're yeah, right. Uh, you're right. Yeah, there's nothing. So there'll, there'll be uh, a couple of, uh, if you look on the um, first floor plan, if you will, top top right of the drawing. Oh, it's faces you'll the see deck be, there. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it, it's a screen porch. So there'll be one, two, three. It looks like four screen panels, sort yep. of like we're seeing on the uh, south elevation. Yes. The only door is going to be a wooden screen door, a swinging screen door um, that you will see from the Swerverland side. So help me yeah. out with the direction. Yeah, hardly. Yeah, that be visible from the road. To the public from yep. well. No, you can't see it. I see it there now. I just didn't see the south. Uh... Thank you. You got that. Anyone from the public wishing to speak in favor or against? Hearing none, we'll move on to application. Thank you, Doug. Application 5078, the application at 164, 166 Main Street. Hi, Matt, Matt Dubois. And that's your home address? It is. Okay, what do you have for us today? So we're gonna do a few things. Um, and do, do you, does the committee have pictures in front of them? Everyone's got everything that you okay. sent in with the application and hopefully everyone drove by and took a good look. Okay, good. Um, so looking to do a few things. The, uh, the deck is in desperate need of repair. The, uh, which, so this is the wraparound porch. Um, the roof above the wraparound porch is in desperate need of attention. Uh, and the slate roof above is also in, in everything uh, making up that slate roof. The, uh, the fascia and the, and the rake, they're, everything needs to be done. So starting from the bottom, um, what, I, what I would like to do is match all existing dimensions and for the most part uh, match existing uh, materials. So the deck is currently painted uh, tongue and groove. I don't know if it's fur, but it's, it's a, a, a tongue and groove wood. And our intent is to uh, replace it with the same. Um, stairs, uh, there's two sets of stairs being a two family. Um, I would like to, I'll replicate those in, uh, in dimension. I'd like, the only thing I'd like to change is the riser, um, make that Azac rather than painted wood. Um, the columns, uh, are in desperate need of work that all, all of the, the base and the, and the tops of the columns are rotted out. In fact, the storm in August knocked one out. You probably saw a, uh, double two by four holding up one edge of the, uh, the roof. Um, I've been, been planning, planning for this and, you know, finally going before you guys, hopefully, hopefully to get approval so I can fix that. But um, the intent, I, I priced out um, replicating the columns and what I would prefer to do, it's, it's actually pretty cost prohibitive. Um, 
And what I actually think would look better would be uh, the column, it's, it's be a fiberglass column, squared column, one panel, um, which I believe I submitted a cut, a cut on that. So that's probably the biggest change would be the, uh, the columns. Uh, the roof of the new roof would be um, its existing beadboard, which has been painted over. I'd like to re replace that with a clear, uh, clear be beadboard, clear coated much more attractive. Um, and then all of the fascia wrapping around the, uh, the roof of the porch uh, would be clad in Azac. And I believe I sent a uh, cut sheet of that as well, what that would look like with a kind of a crown molding looking gutter around the perimeter. Um, the hatchway, if you can see, if you're looking at the picture of the, of the, the front of the house, the front and the west side, uh, there's two railings which lead down to, uh, to a hatch. Uh, I would like to eliminate those rails and put like a permanent planter in their place. Um, they, by code, they're not needed. It's less than 18 inches. Um, and, you know, as far as safety is concerned, uh, a permanent planner would, uh, would, would take care of that. So that is everything for the, for the deck and the uh, wraparound porch and the roof above. Uh, above that, the main portion of the house. So, so the house is made up of, the main house has a uh, hexagon slate tile. Uh, which is, I mean, the house is 200 years old. I don't know how old that slate is, but <laughs> considering its shape, it's probably close to that. Uh, there was an addition put on in, I think, 2005, 2006, where we went uh, before the committee and were approved to put um, an architectural shingle, which it's on the same plane on the back, back side of the house, just as visible uh, from the street. And my intent is to uh, to replace the slate with uh, with the architectural to match, as well as uh, as well as aluminum gutters around the perimeter and uh, Azac fascia, Azac um, soffits, everything wrapped to to meet existing uh, dimensions. So visually, it would look uh, it would look pretty much the same. And I'm sorry, I may have missed it. Gutters are going to be done how? Uh, wrap around, well, uh, on the uh, east and west side, aluminum, um, are they five inch, I believe? Five inch gutter. K style. I'm sorry? The square ones or the round ones? Um, square. I don't think they're either, are they? They're, well, it's, um, they're not half round, are they? Correct. No, it, they've got they're sort of right. faking yes, this. Yes. It fakes uh, yeah. a crown molding. Correct. K style. K style. Yep. Are the main bodies of body of those? Um, columns in decent shape is it just the top and the base and the top portion no if you were to uh, i came by today and they looked i didn't think they looked bad they're actually pretty bad if, if i mean you're welcome to walk up right up to them and touch them if you'd like the um uh, the, there's some scrolling between the uh hexagon shaped um columns and two of them it's completely missing um Half of the others are cracked, split, peeling. Uh, almost every base is either missing or rotten. Um, so no, I would say that that uh, that the columns themselves are are they need to be replaced in in their entirety. Any feedback? <laughs> yeah, I'm, we're, I think we're all probably looking at pictures. And okay, yeah, no problem. We'll, I'd be we'll happy to more. throw some in. Sure. Sure. Uh, 
Well, to, uh, to begin with, uh, there are some parts of the project that I think are a little less troublesome than others. Um, although we tend to revere a uh, slate roof, uh, that roof pitch on your house is uh, from federal era, generally speaking. And so it's uh, fairly flat and not as visible as it might be on some other uh, properties that um, display slate roofs that are more visible. Um, in some areas, um, that's impacted by how much the ground slopes below the building. Uh, and in your case, there's no slope there. So a person walking by is at the highest point that they can be to take a look for the most part. But even when I drove by and walked by there, the roofing material of the slate doesn't really shout out to me as being a uh, particularly vivid um, element on the building. And so I'd be curious to see how the other commissioners feel about that based on their viewing. But based on the, uh, that impression that I have, I could probably live with uh, asphalt on the main roof. Um, on the other hand, I think that the um, posts are among the most distinctive features, not just on that house, but on Main Street. And if they can't be repaired, I would be looking to see them replaced in kind. And I uh, think that they are just so distinctive and look so great um, that I think it would be a real loss uh, to uh, Main Street to use a different style of post. As far as the gutter goes, um, there's a part of me that thinks that just tacking a um, case style gutter around the flat edges of the uh, porch roof uh, would be all right. Uh, on the other hand, those, uh, those posts that hold up the roof are from the same era when I think it wouldn't have been uncommon if someone had a gutter near a post like that, uh, that that gutter might be half round. So um, I don't know if Vatsik, who has some experience with half rounds, uh, shares that um, possibility. Um, in some ways, the case style is good because it tends to get lost. And you already have, if you keep those posts and ornamental posts. On the other hand, um, I have both case style gutters in uh, some parts of my property and half rounds in others. And uh, the half rounds are, are a good choice sometimes uh, in uh, period installations like that mm -hmm. porch is. Uh, so that's kind of where I, I was on this. And I'm curious to see how the uh, commissioners are. But I just wanted to say that as uh, somebody that's watched over that property uh, with us over the past few years, um, it's the, the effort that you've undertaken has been really appreciated. <laughs> Definitely needed. It's very visible um, it and that area just gets more and more popular. Yeah. Uh, and awesome. so it's a real show place uh, for the district. Right. Thank you. It is. I, I have to agree with Doug's comments um, on the posts. I think that there's such a unique feature that I think replacing them in kind is an important um, effort, even if it takes time to do it. Um, on the roof, you know, it, I feel a certain imperative to retain slate in the district where it still exists because it certainly is a dying breed outside of the district. Um, you know, and we've been successful in retaining some slate and wood roofs, uh, even recently, you know, on the firehouse. Um, and I think there is a lot of value to that. Uh, that said, I appreciate Doug's comments that the slope of the roof make it um, less visible. 
And even though I think the shape of the slate is really unusual and really cool, um, something that we don't usually see on the slate roofs, I also think it makes it less obviously slate right. um, when you're looking at the house. So, um, you know, I'm certainly open to discussion, more discussion about the roof. You know, we always say that an addition in a different material um, is often per not only um, allowed, but preferred so that it speaks as an addition. And that certainly is the case with your house. So we never um, let the tail wag the dog on what an addition has. Uh, but in this case, you know, I'm open for discussion with my uh, fellow commissioners on the roof, but I feel pretty strongly about those columns. One thing we didn't comment on was that you are replacing the lattice with that slat work as well. Is right. that, I don't know if you mentioned, is that a wood product? No, it would be an AZEC product. In fact, I, I saw it a few doors down. I believe it's okay. 146. Yeah, I, th I think we might um, just want to be sure what the AZAC product is that you're talking about, too. Um, AZAC has changed their products over the last couple years. And some of the things that we think of as a composite with no gloss now mm -hmm. are actually more of a piece PVC cover or a right. plastic looking cover. And that's something that we're certainly seeking to avoid. We're looking for something uh, that's going to replicate wood in its, um, you know, it, it looking like a painted wood product as opposed to a, a PVC product. Oh, I agree. I, this would be, um, so there are plenty of uh, composite materials um, that try to look like AZAC, but this would be the brand AZAC, which is um, uh, solid, solid throughout. And, and replicate. I'm sorry? In a matte finish, not a. Correct. Yep. Um, I'm curious if the applicant has looked into any product, roofing product, other than architectural shingles. Um, we have from time to time seen um, synthetic slate, for lack of a better way to say it. And um, we haven't seen it in a while. And I just yeah, don't know I... if you've looked at it. So I've had a few roofers out. Um, the one roofer who did slate is Mahan, uh, Mahan roof, slate roofing, and um, out of Springfield, right? Correct. Yep, yeah. they deal with a lot of historic properties. Um, it they that is something they can offer as well. But the price difference was Small. it was definitely less, <laughs> but it was wasn't it wasn't big. much. No. Nope. No. Um. Yeah. And the, the downside to that is regardless of what the warranties that are given by the plastic slate people are, is the roof on your house has lasted 120 years or better. Right. I have a hard time believing that the plastic stuff will last that long. Yeah, time will tell. I won't, be, yeah. I won't be here to see it. No, I, I, I'm with you. Um, okay. All right. I think the applicant has answered most of our questions. Uh, Anybody else on the commission have any questions for the applicant? Matt, do you think we missed anything that you wanted to tell us about? Actually, sorry, Jen. Uh, oh, you can finish. I, I was muted there. I, I did have a question on the columns. Sure. I agree with a lot of the previous commissioners. Now, so the columns itself, if you proposed, would that ornamentation that's coming off the soffit, would that stay? I mean, you went with square columns, all that's going, right? Are you opposed to I would, all that? I would prefer for that to be removed. Uh, What's yeah, up with the, because yeah. that goes with the column. I mean, that's- Sure, yeah, that, that's what I figured. Yeah. What's up with the two columns? I see your two by four, of course. Yep. You know, you have the three in the front and then it starts to return to your uh, bulkhead there. What was, was that replacement columns there too, or? It's been like that since it we- It has been there. Yep. years at least, yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yep, no problem. Anybody else? Anyone from the public wishing to speak in favor or against this application? Hearing none, we'll move on to our final application. Thank you very much, Matt. Thank you. Uh, Final application 5079-121 Broad Street. Hi, 
this is uh, Doug and Sheila Elliott, um, 121 Broad Street. And I know you have our application in front of you. How do you want me to address it? Uh, welcome back. I think you have your contractor too. Oh, yes, I'm sorry. Yes, Ron, Ron Drizzle's on as well. Ron, sorry. you want to give your uh, business address for us too? Yes, hi, Ron Drizzle, 915 Silazine Highway. Thank you. All right, so tell us what you have proposed today. Okay, uh, to summarize, we would like to replace our current garage with a little bit larger one. Um, we would like to add a room behind it. It would be an exercise room uh, in the front of the house between the two structures, the one that's commonly called um, Garden Street. Uh, one Garden Street and the 121 Broad would like to put a covered front porch in there with a railing. Uh, let's see, on our second floor in the back, we're looking to build out the sunroom and have um, a second floor addition for the master, to make it a master suite. Um, let's see, on the front of the Garden Street building, we would like to replace the door that was there when it was a doctor's office, replace it and remove the steps and railing and um, put windows there. And I guess there'd also be a, um, a covered porch across the back that connects the two structures across the back. It would be just six foot deep, but that's in the back of the house. That's kind of the main things. What we'd like to use, um, replace all the windows with um, Anderson um, 400 series and, oh, in the siding, the siding, that's a big one. It's aluminum, aluminum siding and we'd like to replace that with the certainty, um, uh, what do we call them here? The, the shingles, five inch shingles. Imp impressions. In cedar, cedar impressions. impressions, yes, cedar impressions, shingles, yeah. That's a summary. And the cedar impressions, um, just to start, there was a sample at um, our coordinator's house and it was the first one on the left in that booklet, is that correct? It was the, yes. Um, yes. yes. Okay. Straight edge, five, five inch. inch. All right, so to start with um, perhaps what was the biggest problem when you came in to talk to us um, before you had a real application in front of us, that garage, super tricky with the same size and the two doors instead of three. Is it a little smaller than what you were originally proposing? Oh, yes, yes. Yeah. So it's, um, it's basically just taking the current one and enlarging that a bit. It was very small, the one that is there now. And um, the foundation, uh, I should say the structure was not in good good condition. And so we're replacing that and at the same time enlarging it, but not nearly what was gonna be with the three cars. This will just fit two. We gave up on the three car garage. We got, we got the message. You're gonna be able to squeeze three in there anyway. No. Depends what the toy car is, I guess. Is the facade of that portion wider than the facade of the front of the house? No. Okay. By a foot, no. Uh, the, the, can I speak? Oh, of course. Yeah, the, um, I have the, the floor plans. The, uh, the garage and then the side entry door in total is, um, it's, 33 feet, and then the main body of the house is uh, a little over 34 feet. Yeah, by a foot. <laughs> but the garage itself is 27 foot six. So you have the space in between. That's where the uh, side entry is. It's not really garage. It's more of a kind of a breezeway entrance. Gotcha. But the roof is significantly higher too. Am I right? Because you're accommodating Oh, they're accommodating a wider garage with the same pitch roof, so it's got to go up higher. Right. And the, so it's Doug, approximately my, two and a half feet higher than the existing one. Is that all? Yeah, I have a scale. I'm just looking wrong. at the I'm just looking at the drawings that were submitted of the front elevations, and the in that drawing, the garage as it stands now, the peak of that roof comes to the eaves of the existing house. And, oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, yeah. And looking at the proposed front elevation, uh, it goes about a third of the way up the uh, run of the roof. 
So if it's only two and a half feet. <laughs> so I think what it is, is it is two and a half, but the difference is that we have the gutter line is a little bit higher on the new garage to accommodate those doors with a little bit of siding around it. Um, and I think our doors are also a little bit taller than the existing doors Okay, that, that, in proportion. That, yeah, because I'm just looking at the draw. That's, that's what the difference is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And the reason I sort of call it out, it well, uh, you know, right now the garage as it stands is definitely subservient to the main house. It's less so. And, you know, it's certainly much improved over the three car garage which sort of overwhelmed the main house. So I'm, I'm delighted to see this. Uh, I'm just trying to think if there is some way to make the impact of that large garage roof line a little bit less in some way. And I'm, I'm blanking right now, but let's keep going. Thank you. Are you asking a question or? No, Doug, he just got back on uh, okay. Ron. He's good, yep. Uh, so looking at the rear elevation, which is very different than the existing one. However, I think uh, seeing as it is the rear elevation, it is very interesting visually. And I think that will not be an, will not make a negative impact in any way on the district nor even on this house. I think it will be in a, a addition. And I don't think that it looks inappropriate for the house as it stands. So. I think it's a more modern look, but there's certainly plenty of precedence on the green for a more modern looking addition on the back of cer older, older homes. Yep. Some of our copies are a little rough on the um, the doors, the garage doors, but Actually, all our copies are a little rough because they're all the same. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, most of the most of the um, materials that they provided um, came, came out, out clear, well. But the door the doors didn't come out so clear. Um, but just so do you want me to, to explain the doors? Can you see what they are? The carriage style with the two panels. The yeah, they look, very, they look very nice. I think um, you know, it's just hard to see the window configuration is. So if you look at the front elevation, it's they're they're drawn on there. Just like that, okay. Okay. Yeah. Four panel doors. Don't be alarmed that there's few questions. It's just that you were very thorough in your application. So it covers <laughs> most of the details, but I think we're all just making sure we've got a handle on everything that's here. One thing that was brought up in the pre-application meeting was the uh, change on the far right side of the doctor's office. Um, if I can the, find the find the drawings here. Yeah, the, uh, the proposed right elevation that you have on in, with our, I don't know how it's numbered in, it's uh, drawing three of five. Mm -hmm. um, so right now on the far right hand side, there is a window there. There's two windows on that side if I'm not mistaken from the drawing. And what's proposed is some sort of small addition out there with a roof. Is that correct? Okay, so are you talking about where we want to have the gas fireplace box? I think that's what I'm, I have no idea what's inside, but yes. Yes, okay, so, yeah. So no addition. it's not an addition, it's, um, well, it's replacing, there was actually a door that is currently um, by the previous owner, it's boarded up, it's got shutters on the outside. Yeah. Um, 
and then a window and we were closing out both of those we were having a gas fireplace inside and last time i know you didn't like the bumping out so much so we we shared the difference we moved it halfway inside and okay. there's a page that i have explaining kind of a reason why we didn't feel the um uh, well, you recommended maybe a, a, a brick fireplace. And I, I took a picture of the house and it's in the package there and it shows. It's, it's the last two. page, uh, Sheila. That okay, of it. thank shows you. the Generac and moving yep. the AC unit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. And that's why um, that's what currently it looks like there. Yep. And um, and I even found the permit back from uh, I forget what year that said that that always had to be protected. Or hidden from the road with the generator, yeah. and we're not planning on moving the generator. Okay. And so to put in a, um, a a a fireplace there, brick fireplace there, seems kind of silly. Okay. Um, when you're already trying to hide the area. Yeah. Um, okay. Uh, yeah. So I won't argue that one anymore. Uh, the one question I will have is, the roof on that fireplace is going to be shingled or metal. Um, that's shingled. That's going to be shingled. And is it going to hang in the air or is it going to be grounded in some way with a foundation or some sort of skirting? Um, my thought was to do some type of grounding, um, you know, mm -hmm. some type of small foundation under it just because I don't like that empty underneath. Yeah. It, it looks more natural. It looks like it's sort of hanging there. And yeah. in, in the it's case- It's not going to be, it's gonna go right into the ground. Okay, yeah. Certainly some, there's bay windows that just hang there and they look, they're, they're usually attached with some sort of visual brackets to give them a support, visual support. And yeah, if you, if you ground it with some, some base, that would be great. That would be the plan, yes. Okay. All right. Vatsik, are you done? I think I'm done. Uh, I uh, was having trouble getting back in, so I don't know if it's already been addressed. Uh, have the commissioners already asked about the siding? Yes. Uh, okay. The changes from aluminum to cedar impressions, uh, basically vinyl, fake vinyl uh, uh, shingles. shingles. The, um, Actually, they're real the, vinyl shingles. <laughs> I, I I felt like I should speak to that first. Um, you know, the, it is a kind of a big change from um, the aluminum siding that's there right now in terms of the um, smooth uh, the smooth clapboard, mm -hmm. and you know, I guess that to a certain extent, I would prefer to see the smooth clapboard stay there. Um, and, and that's mainly because of the original time that the siding was changed over, they chose a smooth siding that may have replicated what was underneath. I don't know if there's a smooth clapboard underneath that uh, aluminum siding or not, but I think, tend to think given the age of the house, it's it's probably the case that it is. Uh, to a certain extent, I do think that the installation of the porch on the front and the change of the doctor's office door to a window does introduce the possibility of reskinning the house uh, because it presents uh, it's going to present a different look uh, than it did before. Um, so I, I guess I'm uh, I'm open uh, to the use of of that, but um, and, and but I do think that I mean, for instance, one of the things that um, works for me is that addition, uh, the bedroom addition that's off the middle of the back of the house, kind of presents a roof that creates more massing behind the building that allows that doctor's office wing to look more like part of the house. So it doesn't need a separate entrance. So I think that there's a, a way to, uh, to reconcile a, a lot of these changes and, and maybe 
Uh, changing the siding as well kind of feels like uh, yet another step that's almost a leap. And uh, it might work out fine. But one of my concerns is that the main part of this house, for whatever reason, probably because uh, houses of that era on the green were built to be no larger than they are, is that the central structure remains about the size that it is. And so I don't know if anyone else stated a concern about it, but I'm certainly glad to see the three car, three car garage reduced to two. Uh, but I'm still a little concerned about the fact that the garage itself is wider than the main part of the house. At least it looks that way to the uh, casual eye. They're about uh, the same, Doug. The, uh, if it's about the same, then maybe in real life, uh, and maybe in real life, it won't hit you the same way as looking at a flat elevation. And uh, so then maybe that's a little bit less of a concern. Everybody hates a crowded garage and opening doorways and things is tough. Um, although we're, it's something we're kind of used to uh, with the older garages that we have here uh, for the most part. So I'm sympathetic to the homeowner wanting to widen it a bit. And as I just said a moment ago, even if it isn't wider uh, and only looked like it was wider on the rendering uh, or is the same width, I do think that in real life, the middle will still be prominent enough to not be lost as the most prominent element of the house. The, all that said, um, the application of that siding I have, um, like I said, I, I don't know if Jen has an opinion on it because I don't know if Jen's house had always had uh, a uh, shingle style siding on it or if there was a change uh, in hers. And I think that, uh, I'm sorry to bring that up personally, uh, Jen, but I think that you if you've been through this choice, you might be able to help uh, instruct my us house, on it. My house, believe it or not, was stucco underneath. Uh -huh. and they went to a nine inch reveal aluminum siding decades ago until the tornado. So the, the one thing that um, we did, which was um, different than this proposal, is that instead of corner boards, we did um, the mitered corners instead of a corner board. You know, do I think it's less forgiving when it's in white? Yes. Do I think the mitered corners look better? Yes. Um, I don't know that it's a, a, a breaking point for me on the particular um, material. You know, I love the material, obviously. I think it, look, it looks great when it's put on correctly, and I'm sure your contractor will do a good job on that. Um, I do think the mitered corners look nicer. It's a, a cleaner finish. Um, on the house for sure. But, uh, you know, I certainly know that they're much more expensive too. Um, I do think I went and looked at the sample you had provided because I was concerned the you know, the names on it shot uh, rough split shakes and sawmill and whatever. It does have a, a little texture to it, um, which is a change for you. And it does hold dirt, but it's not the roughest of the ones that they offer. Um, which I would definitely not be interested in seeing because, as I said, it does hold the dirt when you're on a busy street. Um, but, you know, it's a, it's a great product. I wanted to, Doug, do you have more questions? On your no, I, I just wanted to wrap up by saying, uh, generally speaking, I'm uh, really grateful for the thought uh, and consideration that the folks undertook here by engaging in the preliminary um, application hearing opportunity. And uh, to the extent that they uh, considered what they heard there, um, that's really appreciated. And uh, for our sake, I think that we are trying to also embrace the things that are still most important to them uh, at this point as they try to uh, put their own stamp on the building. Um, I will say the railings, um, at least two of us in this room today have recently used those Intex railings and they're really great. Um, are you doing the flat top on the rail or the there's a curved or a flat? Uh, we're going with the Dartmouth line so to get it a little bit heftier and um, there, we are going with the curved one. The, 
I, I think it's in the package. Yeah. Yeah, I just didn't know. It's not circled, so I just wanted oh, to sorry specify for, for us. It's it's fine. Um, yeah. I used the Dartmouth also, and it's oh, really it's great. one of the pages. It is circled. Yeah. Maybe it didn't show up. Where there's a, a a picture of a building, and then down below it says Dartmouth. And there's 400 shirts. Yeah, it's circled. Yeah, there. 400. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, actually, mine doesn't show it circled. That's funny. But um, I use, the Dartmouth railing's beautiful. We just put it in this year. Oh, nice. Can I just address something that, like, what Doug was saying about the siding and the clapboard? And um, we did uh, propose initially with you guys in the pre uh, uh, um, meeting a product called Restoration Classics, also made by the certainty and when Ron got the sample we were just not happy with it at all the quality and we were it was disappointing because they presented that one as something to be used in a situation like this with older homes so that's when we said okay what else is there and we, what we found with this with the um, product the uh, I just changed my page here but that sawmill was is very smooth compared to a lot of shingles and also a straight edge with only a five it's a five inch so I thought that was very Close and replicating, you know, um, the uh, clapboard style as closely as we could, but with the shingles because it was a straight edge, it was smoother, and it was only five inches. So, um, understand. I mean, there's going to be yeah. more house there than there is now, and in some ways, that new siding. This is a good time to uh, make the switch. Um, and there also happens to be on the mayor's house down the street. A, a similar situation where there's actually shingles that are hanging on the house fitted enough so that you might think it's clapboard from a distance, but in if you look up close, it's really a nice straight uh, five inch, uh, or in your case, I, I'm sure it's wider than that, but you there's sometimes the middle ground uh, that gives you uh, a nice result with the uh, cedar impressions so-called uh, siding uh, that kind of mimics uh, a much better result than you can get on a clapboard imitation vinyl siding because mm -hmm. even the ones that call themselves high end tend still to reveal a role to them. So right. thank you. Thank you. And that is you know where how we ended up with this product and um, I think it's a good solution for us. The middle. Oh, thank you. Well, once again, I really very much appreciate all the detail um, that went into the application with all the extras spelled out. It makes it very easy on us um, and again, leads to fewer questions. Um, does anyone else have any questions on any of the details that were provided? Yeah, Jen, if I could, I'd just like to um, address the masking that there's such a setback on this garage. There's no doubt it's a change. But even to Doug's earlier point with that second story addition, especially when you come around the garden street side, you know, the prominence of the main home is still going to be there in the frontage. Yes, they're about 34 feet to 33, but there is a substantial setback to the existing garage and the current garage uh, is, or, as proposed. Uh, I'm really a fan of that porch. Um, you know, that's not it's going kind of where that picket fence is now. It's really, you know, the whole whole flow of the house and, and is looks it's going to be a great improvement on that corner. Agree, Chris. All right. Anyone else have anything they'd like to add? All right. I think we've got everything we need. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Thank you. Any members of the public we wishing to speak in favor or in opposition to this application? Hearing none, I will entertain a motion to close the public hearing and open the public meeting. So moved. Second. Thank you. Going back to the beginning, application five all zero. Those, uh, oh, oh, I'm sorry. All those in, sorry. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you. Uh, returning to application 506657 Middletown Avenue. Uh, may I have a motion? Motion to table. I'll second. 
I think we could use a little bit more information. Um, you know, I very much appreciate um, Jennifer Carey coming in today, uh, but I, I would like to know if the old windows are still available and, and maybe if we can look at what can be done with what's there as well. Uh, it's a substantial change from the original windows, um, you know, without an application. And so we need to have some further discussion on that. So uh, anything further from anyone on that? Nope. All those in favor of tabling, say aye. 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 So aye. remind me, who's voting here? Oh, I'm sorry. Um, you, both you and, and yes, okay. Claire okay. is abstaining. OK. All those in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Hearing none, the motion carries. Application 5071, 71 Center Street. Um, this is the one Claire's going to abstain because she was not here and I also missed the original application. So I'm going to abstain as well. Both Vasek and uh, Kathleen can vote on this one. May I have a motion? I'll make a motion to approve as submitted. I'll second it for the purposes of the discussion. Uh, at which I would like to open. Um, I, the, first of all, I uh, appreciate the fact that uh, Doug had other business that brought him to the meeting uh, anyway, Doug Lasella, um, but I'm glad that he had a chance to speak up about this um, and his concern about windows. I think that what's important uh, for us to remember on the record is that, um, I think that in all the previous applications for the uh, buildings where this window has been used, uh, at least from this commissioner's point of view, a lot of those approvals uh, were either initiated uh, or embraced by me in an effort to see if I could uh, keep as open a mind about this product as is possible. Uh, and about replacement windows of an insert variety as is possible, because I think that it's easy to uh, criticize this particular one when in fact, there are others that share the same shortcoming, which is that our charge is to um, use products that replicate the look of the existing. Uh, when this window was first used on the firehouse, uh, it was a successful installation. In part though, we learned later, there were a couple things going for it. One was the way that it was installed, it was installed without a shadow line around the windows uh, in the same way that uh, when they were installed at the old academy, um, there was visible trim from the old windows. Um, there's something about the installation difference in the two brick buildings where there's the window looks more like a new construction window in the uh, firehouse, even though it isn't, while it looks more like a replacement window in the old academy. One of the differences that we've talked about before is that the installation at the firehouse has smaller window panes. And so the uh, amount of uh, uh, window uh, grill trim uh, looks more attractive on the firehouse than on the larger panes that you see on the old academy. The same problem with the brick uh, house next to the daycare center on Garden Street. Uh, in a six over six, the, especially since there's no paint that reaches the glass in the same way that uh, paint would reach the glass on a real wood window, effectively making the uh, divider look a little bit wider than it is. Generally speaking, those uh, on both of those uh, brick six over six projects, the old Academy and the house on Garden Street, uh, there didn't look like there was enough uh, divider there. So when it came time to uh, consider 100 uh, Center Street, um, we talked about some of the things that were of concern. And one was that the mutton didn't look substantial enough. 
So we asked if they wanted to consider a wider mountain and they did. Uh, and they did really, I think at our prompting. Um, and again, that was because there's a real a relentless drive for replacement windows in the district. And that drive is something that we try to be responsive to. There are so many uh, replacement windows available uh, and there are many that better replicate the look of the original than others. And uh, sometimes uh, you can use the product that we've used here uh, successfully but it isn't successful every time. And we found that using the wider Muntin in 100 center didn't work uh, as a solution to the um, thinness problem. Um, we eventually approved this window on Broad Street in part because uh, Mrs. Keene indicated that she had undertaken a thorough review and that she was certain that this was the best looking window available uh, for that project and we embrace that. Um, and since then the windows are there and I'm sure they're very uh, comfortable from the inside, but I don't know that they could be regarded as um, replicating the look of what was there. Um, and I realized uh, that despite that, uh, we embraced the, uh, and when I say we, I'm saying me included, the uh, use of this window on the Benson property on Middletown Avenue. And part of the reason I did that was again, because I indicated that if there was a way to hide the shadow line, uh, hide the fact that it was an insert window, that would be a great thing. As it turned out, the uh, contractor and the homeowner went to the trouble of retrimming those windows as best they could and still there was uh, a perimeter of viewable. And at the last meeting, when the Davis proposal was made, the uh, Doug indicated that it was something that couldn't be hidden. And I appreciated him saying so uh, because my kind of unending quest to try to get that reveal covered was something I wasn't going to push anymore. And so I indicated that I thought that the uh, project should be tabled there because of the high visibility at the corner of garden and center. And because it is just a couple doors down from 100 center where the evidence of the replacement window seems to be there because of the larger mountains, which would have been our fault, but the uh, installation does not hide the fact that there are inserts around their perimeter. And again, uh, it shows the, the limits of the product. And I agree with Doug that um, it is a struggle on the contractor and the homeowner side to hear this, but replacement windows are among the most significantly regulated items in a historic district. And the fact that our district is as large as it is means that we're, we try to be more open to them than they would be in most districts. And we're always looking for products that replicate the look of uh, original work more successfully than not. And there are other products that replicate the look of the existing more successfully than the Harvey. Despite that, commissioners routinely approve them in part using the previous approvals that I um, engaged in, in part at, because I was trying to uh, be supportive of our uh, local contractors, of our local homeowners, of my neighbors who want them. But the fact remains that when we approve windows that don't replicate the look of the original, we're losing something. We're losing something that's more evident than some roofs, like the, the roof on Main Street that we were talking about earlier. We're losing something that may be more evident than most people give credit for. And um, that's where that comes from. So it's, it's not out of a lack of respect in any way for 
um, our residents or our contractors. In fact, it's been out of an overabundance of respect for them and for my fellow commissioners that I've participated in all the approvals that I just outlined. Thank you. I think uh, Doug's argument would have kept me out of the electric chair on that one. I appreciate it. Uh, however, I, I think it goes back to, um, you know, it was a great comment by Bassett. You know, it's, it's not, you're not going to be able to hide that a replacement window is a replacement window, as, as I believe. So it, it is subjective, in my opinion. I thought a successful application to the one that of all that you mentioned, Doug, uh, 100 Center Street. Um, you know, the Garden Street uh, that was approved 116, or excuse me, Center Street, those windows were replacement windows already around that sun port. So that kind of view that you see from Garden Street is not being touched. Uh, we're keeping those half moon windows. Uh, to me, this, this uh, application at, at 71 Center Street the problem that draws my eye is the, um, you, you know, will be the removal of the triple tracks. Um, they did talk to the stops. So you, you can, it is one of the larger frames. I think Vasek, your comment on, on is that we, you lose 7% right away of glass with a replacement window. Is that adequate or accurate? You said that in the past, um, give or take. It depends on the size of the window, but yes. Depends on the size of the window, no doubt. So. But to me, it, it's this is a it, it's it's not a bad thing that and you all, you've brought up a couple of times, even going back to we're turning into West Hartford. Yes, we lose something, uh, but to me, um, this would be a, a, a right appropriate application uh, for a window at this location. Not a strong argument, but and again, we're not going back to uh, every house stands alone. Uh, the applicant had a chance to review um, the pluses and minuses of this window, went to a seminar, spoke uh, you know, with his uh, installer, um, and it, can, it convinced me that this is an appropriate window for that uh, location. I do think one of the distinguishing features from 71 is that those facade windows were retained um, on the front of the house, uh, and then those the decorative windows on the third floor as well. Similar half mo attic windows, yeah. Does anyone else have anything further to add? I, I think I'll just share for a minute. Um, I spent a lot of time on 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 the street this weekend. It was so nice, and we took many walks, and there were huge amounts of people, as you know, in our district over the past few weekends. And I really spent time looking at the windows, trying to do the best job in educating myself that I could and noticing and trying to figuring out what this is all is about. And I appreciate um, the contractor and Doug, your, your take and sharing. And um, I even appreciate the homeowner going to a class because that's exactly what I would do to see what would be the best window. And I'm not really in favor of replacement windows and I've gone back and forth on my own property. And I, I have to say, I, I did notice. And I, I, once I, you know, the second time around and I looked again and, and you, you, I noticed what Doug is talking about and I noticed um, the differences and what was, what made it sp uh, special, what made our, our village special and what kept it unique and what kept it, um, distinct. And I, I think um, we, we all work very hard to do that with our own homes. And, and right here, you, for years, you have all worked very hard. So for that, I, I want to say thank you. Um, so I, I, I think what makes a difference for me is the Blue Star rating for the, I'm really um, appreciate that they're always trying to have good energy status. But again, it's the, it's that look on the outside that um, people see, and we even have more people than ever before I've ever seen downtown, uh, I call it downtown now, uh, in the village, and I think that it sort of ups the ante here, and I think it's, it becomes even more important. 
And um, so as a new member, um, I, I just, I'm trying to weigh all of that and um, thank you all for sharing and we'll see. Thank you. Before you call the vote, um, I just wanted to say one thing in response to that, which is that uh, I don't want to give the impression that there is no product that can uh, replicate the look. And it really depends on the installation of that product. But I keep coming back to a house that's at the corner of Elm and uh, Old Pewter uh, going towards uh, Route 3. Um, that I would encourage uh, commissioners and homeowners to take a look at because that home uh, is a Dutch colonial house mustard color and it has replacement windows in it. And boy, they uh, replicate the look of what uh, would have originally been there uh, pretty masterfully. So there are products that do that. I'm not saying that every time that product that is used at that address has been as successfully uh, installed, but uh, that's a good place to look for uh, what you might wanna try to accomplish because I'm assuming that that window, those uh, replacement windows at the corner of Elm and Old Pewter are Anderson uh, renewals. And I'm assuming that their energy rate started, but I don't know for sure. Um, the contractors would know better, but. Uh, I think it's possible to accomplish both, uh, but it does, uh, uh, does require looking at the most successful projects and trying to emulate those. Thank Thanks. you, Doug. Thank you. Does anyone from the public have anything in favor no, of no, no public, no public. Oh, I'm sorry, you're right. I said it again. Mm -hmm. Thank you, folks. So uh, the, the, if, the, if, there's, if there's nothing further, I'll call the vote. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed? Nay. 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 And with that, the uh, motion fails. I'll uh, substitute a motion uh, to table. Is it possible to have one after a? Uh... Sure. Great. And why? Uh, the motion to table would be to provide the homeowner with opportunities to continue their exploration without having to file another application. Jen? Is there a second? I'll second. Okay. And, uh, All those in favor? I just indicate, and for the record, this is what I had suggested on the Davis property, also in the same street. So trying to follow some level of consistency, at least in my own uh, journey. So, sorry about that. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Nay. Motion to table is granted. Moving on to application 5073-60 Knott Street. May I have a motion? Okay. I'll move uh, to approve as submitted. Okay, Jen, who's in, me or Kathleen? Uh, you are. Okay. I'll second. Uh, thank, thank you, you Claire. Claire. Um, I think it's a perfectly appropriate addition with minimal impact on the district and minimal visibility from the street. I uh, would like to reiterate that I appreciate Mr. Burrell coming in with such a thorough application, um, especially with such little impact on our district. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Hearing none, the motion, the project is approved as submitted. Application 507432 Church Street. Make a motion to approve with the stipulation that there shall be two transition pieces on both the east and the west side running from the back of the fence towards the front. Uh, Vasek, if I can clarify, he wanted two solid panels, six feet tall. On okay. East Sorry. And west sides with one solid transition panel. Okay. So two transition, two solid panels with one transition on the sides. And uh, the stipulation number two, there shall be a double four, four foot yes. gate. Yes. Double four, four foot, foot gate at the, at the front facing the front as opposed to the one. 
Second. I think we discussed this pretty yeah. thoroughly um, yeah. in the application. Yeah, the, the homeowner has come in with a very appropriate fence for the district, something that will work well both with his property and with adjacent properties. Agreed. Nothing further. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Hearing none, the motion carries. The application is approved with stipulations. Application 5075 to Sharon Lane. Make a motion to approve as submitted. Second. Uh, it's a perfectly appropriate replacement slider in that location with minimal impact in the district. Um, it's not very visible with the fence around it and uh, with the large piece of glass in the, in the small framing. I don't think anyone will be the wiser to the new slider except for our applicant. Yeah, and actually, I mean, we're other than the change in the fact that this is a manufactured product, as we love saying, product that was done many, many years ago, this is pretty much like for like. Agreed. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Hearing none, the motion, the application is approved as submitted. Application 5076, 33 Belmont. Make a motion to approve as submitted. I second it um, as long as nobody needs any steps. I don't believe there were any. I didn't. I, I can't have, think of any. No. Okay, great. Uh, just let me take one, one quick look here. Pretty straightforward, everything there. Yeah, so we, we talked about uh, the stairs, which are probably not going to be visible from any street. We talked about uh, the funny pattern on the uh, foundation, which was explained. Uh, yeah. The only uh, comment I would have is that, um, you know, we are, we are allowing a Harvard, Harvey Majesty on the side of the building. Um, I would hate to see in this house, as in the earlier application, to lose those wood windows on the front porch because they really are distinctive. Yep. So that certainly wouldn't dictate what we would do on the porch later. Um, but other than that, I think it's a perfectly appropriate addition um, with minimal keep, impact due to the narrow siding on the sides of the house. Keep in mind that you are also proving a vinyl bathroom window. Bathroom window at the back facade of the house, which can be seen from Center Street. It can, but it's a very distant I, view. I realize, I, just yeah. figure I'd make sure that everybody was aware of that. Just so we know that it's not going to dictate what comes in the future for the balance of the house. Yep. Thank you, Buster, understand. for reminding us of that. Um, if there's nothing further, call the vote. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Hearing none, the application is approved as submitted. Application 5078, 164 to 166 Main Street. Make a motion to table. I'll second. I, I think we need to uh, have a great proposal. I, I think though we need to take a look at uh, what can be done about those existing columns. The columns, and I have a question about the roof. Uh, I did some quick back of the envelope stuff. I suspect he's got about eight square of roof on there. And I realized that there's a huge difference in price between what he's proposing and what probably what this commission would love to see. And that's the replacement of the slate. Of course, if he did that, he wouldn't need an application before us for that. Um, and even though it's a huge difference in price, I suspect that a slate roof is somewhere between 15 and 30 K for that house, for that bit of it, uh, depending of course on the bids and all that. Um, the thing is amortize that over 120 years and the numbers become pretty small and he will be replacing, well, he won't or somebody else will, will be replacing an asphalt roof many times before the slate roof is dead. Um, 
and it is a significant, it makes a significant impact both on that house and on the neighborhood. And it would be, it would be a loss if we, if that went away. Any additional comments? Hearing none, I'll call the vote. Motion to table. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? Hearing none, the motion to table is approved. Application 5079-121 Broad Street. I'll, I'll move to approve as submitted. I'll second it. So we're- I, um, as I indicated earlier, um, I think that the project benefited from the uh, discussion that we had with the homeowners uh, last month. Um, the homeowners have spent a lot of time uh, familiarizing themselves with the neighborhood and the vistas from all the angles. And I do think that um, over the life of that property, uh, even though the doctor's office may have been built with it to begin with, the home has a bit of a rambling nature to it. And the things they're proposing now kind of continue that um, theme on the building and the skin that they're suggesting kind of unifies it. It's going to be larger than it was. So I think that something other than the relatively narrow aluminum siding on it is something that we would be looking uh, for going forward anyway. Uh, the home already has synthetic siding on it. Aluminum is great, but I think aluminum three inch with all of the additional massing there uh, would not be the best choice for it. So uh, with that and uh, the other uh, uses in the 21st century, um, uh, new family there, um, I think that the, what they're proposing is a nod to the old uh, as I mentioned, the siding would kind of match uh, the rail house down the street. Uh, you have no more than, I think, two uh, or three shingled houses like that on that side. And I think that uh, it'll be uh, a successful project. I think the reveal, I, I agree, Doug, and you know, the siding choice uh, is what we were presented with, but I, I think a homeowner going with the five inch reveal on it is and so much um as you said rambling it will hide the uh, nature of the uh the shake versus uh the clapboard yeah It'll the last you thing a little bit i would suggest about that is if they haven't seen it on an actual house uh that they pay close attention to the beginnings of the install uh on whatever side of the house it is so that they're sure they really like it because there's going to be a lot of it on that house uh, by the time it's all said and done. So if they uh, had any second thoughts about it, it would be uh, good to address those. Before. I, I believe they did their homework. They walked all around the district, checked out homes with this type of siding. And uh, it was pretty I may have decisions. missed that part of the discussion since I uh, got lost. But uh, in any case, uh, the, uh, I, I wish them well on the project. I appreciate too the thought that went into the project and the um, details that were covered in the application materials saved us a lot of time and our coordinator a lot of time. Of course, the quality of the products um, helps us as well. I very much appreciate that they were um, open to omitting that third bay of the garage. Um, I think it's going to be a great project. I'm looking forward to seeing it. Anyone else? If there's nothing further, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. The application is approved as submitted. Moving on to the approval of minutes of October 13, 2020. For those of us that were here, are you blowing sure comments to, to Linda? Thank you, Vasek. Motion to approve is submitted. I'll second. second. Thank you, Chris. Um, I'll just thank our reporter as well as our historic district coordinator at this time. Thank you. Thank you. All those in favor say aye. 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 Kim, you've been silent today. Do you have any um, public she, comments on general matters for us today? She went to sleep. Any, <laughs> any report today? None. 
Correspondence? None. With that, I will entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Everyone for a great meeting. Thank, Thank, you. Thank you, Jen, and everyone. Bye-bye. Good night. Good night.